Hello, welcome to my first speed drawing video. I want to start off by apologizing about this sketch because I hadn't actually realized that I could record myself doing a digital drawing like this and post it until I had got to this point in the drawing. So this is where I started recording it and the sketch has already been done. But we are going to go through the rest of the process together. So yeah. I also want to explain that anyone who isn't familiar with my channel already, I am very much new to digital drawing. I have hardly any experience with it at all. And so a lot of this video, you're going to see me experimenting, trying out new brushes, um, trying out different colors, just trying to figure out the process. This isn't my first completed digital drawing, but it is only like my third in a year. So I'm very much new. Also to anybody who's watching this and interested in getting an update on my channel, I will be giving just a little bit of an update on especially my relearning art series for anyone who likes watching that, but it'll be at the end of this video. So just stick around and I'll give you a timestamp in the description in case you wanted to skip to it. Okay, so for this drawing, while we are drawing this character, I wanted to actually talk about how I got into drawing characters in the first place, um, mostly because this is actually my first character that I've ever come up with. And we're going to talk about her a little bit later in the video, but I thought first we just start with talking about where my interest in character drawing even came from in the first place. So if you've already been watching my videos, then you already know that I'm actually in the process of starting how to learn to draw characters again. Um, I'm basically just starting from scratch because I had a very long period of time where I had stopped drawing pretty much at all, but especially with characters. And I don't think that I ever learned properly enough on how to draw them. And I just figured just going right back to the beginning and starting new was going to be the best way for me to approach this. But anyway, I first got in to drawing characters when I think I was about 10 or 11. And before that, I was always into art and drawing and painting anyway. I do remember that painting was one of my favorite activities as a kid. And you know what? It's still one of my favorite activities as an adult. It's just, there's something about it that's so relaxing and fun and I used to actually do that a lot one of my grandparents would have kind of a collection of figures and craft paint and then she'd paint the figures with us and I want to say that was my first time really getting into art and then I remember painting a lot on my own as a kid I think I used to paint a lot of flowers um, but I also tried painting people not very well though, obviously, as a child. But I also really liked painting in school whenever we had like art classes. That was my favorite thing. Um, and I vividly remember being so into the painting part of that. That was my favorite activity. But around the age of 10 or 11, I had a DSI. And anybody who had a DSI at this time will probably remember Flipnote Hatena. It was like social media that you drew. But if you are not familiar with this at all, basically what it was, was a very simple kind of drawing program where you would draw each frame and then at the end it would flip through the frames really fast creating a flip note or like a sort of video and so this was really popular for people who were into animating things not something that i was good at 
but a lot of people also used it for other purposes like sometimes there would be like surveys on there where you could download that person's set of questions and then write in your answers and then upload it again it was just kind of this fun thing and then some people would also use it just to make drawings and then post them um actually i remember that there was specifically this one activity that you could do on Slipknot Hatana where somebody would draw like a shell of a character and then you got to customize it like you would download it and draw on the face and the hair and color it in um, and it was really fun to do that I remember being very mesmerized by different people's drawings and art styles and just I think you got like two layers on this application and the way that people could still make kind of complex and dynamic drawings with just two layers and a bunch of pixels was very impressive to me even at that young age and I really wanted to be able to do it as well. So it inspired me to start learning how to draw but I especially wanted to learn how to draw characters because I really liked looking at those. Um, the most popular style of drawing, I would say, was kind of in like the anime category. So that's where I decided that I would start learning how to draw. And I bought some drawing books um, around this time. I think I was in like grade six when I got the first one. and. Of course, they had um, the like how-to pages. The first one I ever bought was really thick, like a really big book. And I don't think I ever got through all of it. I kind of wish that when I got this book, I would have been a little bit more like studious with it and actually tried to do the step-by-step -step drawings that they showed, like one of those every day. But I instead would just kind of practice those every once in a while and just use it as kind of more like a pose reference book, um, which also wasn't great for my understanding of how to draw like anatomy. Um, but again, I was only like 11, around 11 years old. so. I was never taking this that seriously. It was just fun to me. But what I liked the most about drawing characters was getting to customize their hair and their clothes and their personalities to match that. And so that is what I focused on the most. I was way more excited to draw those aspects of the characters than like the fundamental things. So at this time, I spent a lot of time drawing my own characters and just kind of giving them like unique styles. And I also was trying to develop my own drawing style. Of course, we started off pretty rough. Um, I do have a complete sketchbook tour if you're interested in watching something like that. Uh, it's the first video on my channel and it's pretty obvious that's a sketchbook tour. So. If you want to go check that out, then you can see all of the things that I'm talking about in this video. But anyway, I was definitely pursuing that anime style. Um, I wanted my characters to be like really cute and have very kind of sparkly eyes. I thought that was really fun. And so that's what I did for the first little while, and I basically just copied things that I saw on the internet, on Flipnote Hatena, in the drawing books, and eventually on Instagram. And I'd say probably by the time I was like 14 is when I really started to kind of develop my own drawing style. And by this time, I also had a bit of like a library of characters that I would draw over and over again, including this one, though we'll talk about it in a little bit. This one is much 
older than the other ones and I actually came up with her before I even started getting into character drawing in the first place. But the thing about my drawing style at this time was that I became very nitpicky over it whenever I really wanted to improve. I kind of had it in my head that anytime I wanted to improve my art style, I could just make a list of all the things I didn't like about it currently and then find ways to change those, which almost sounds like it would work, except it kind of started a cycle of just picking out all of the things that I thought were flaws or weren't good enough. And then that started to kind of be all that I saw in my own drawings. By the time I was in like grade 10, so I think I was about 15, we had started learning how to draw more realistic portraits. And we did this by um, doing some like self portraits in class with a mirror. And I remember originally being very nervous about this because I thought that realistic art was scary and difficult and I just really liked doing unrealistic illustrated styles because it was a lot less intimidating. But I actually found when we did this in class that the realistic portraits were not as difficult as I thought they would be. I think it really helped that I had already had a habit of drawing, to be fair. Like, the fact that I was already used to trying to draw things that I saw, even if they weren't necessarily realistic, probably lent itself to trying to draw a self-portrait for the very first time, which um, made it feel a lot less scary and complicated. And after I realized that that wasn't so scary as I thought it was, I figured that maybe I would incorporate some of that into my drawing. But the problem was that since I already had a super heavily illustrated style, incorporating like realistic features was a bit of a challenge and I ended up kind of questioning my own art style a lot, um, which is actually kind of unfortunate because the art style I had before that was really starting to become like consistent, even though I didn't have the best skills when it came to anatomy or poses, angles and all that stuff, but at least the style was becoming consistent and I probably could have continued working with that to just be better at drawing in general. but. Because of this realism thing, I changed the way that I was looking at my own drawings and I thought that this kind of illustrated, especially like anime style, was actually kind of immature. And I started to see it as less valuable and I thought that I needed to change my style to be more mature, to seem more serious, and to be taken more seriously. So. I pretty vividly remember um, sitting on the couch with my sketchbook and being pretty frustrated with trying to figure out how I was going to change my style. And I think I just spent a bunch of time um, with a pencil and I just drew a bunch of different shapes for like eyes and noses and mouths and I decided that I was going to just pretty much give up the whole style that I had and replace all of it with kind of semi-realistic features. But the other thing to note about this period of time is that I had also just downloaded Instagram onto my iPod and I noticed that there was like a community of artists on Instagram who were even more advanced than the ones that I had seen on Flipnote Hatena, and a lot of the styles that I came across fell within the regions of like semi-realistic. So this is also part of the reason why I wanted to change my style was because I had a new kind of example to live up to. 
and I just wanted to be as good at character drawing as the people that I saw online who were obviously like way ahead of me like they had obviously been practicing for so much longer or they had practiced just in a way that was more effective than what I was doing um, at least for them so the thing is that when I started putting my new style together I didn't really use a lot of guidelines for where to put things on the face and the features started to look a lot more kind of disjointed and also I didn't use a lot of guidelines for drawing anatomy either. I talk about these things a bit more in some of my relearning art episodes so if you're interested on why you can watch those to find out. I don't want to like fully explain all of that again here. But basically, I started only doing like shoulders and up drawings. And the only angles I ever did was like head on. Um, so my drawings became a lot less interesting because I was intimidated by the new style that I was trying to achieve. And I didn't really know how to actually execute it. I probably would have really benefited at this time from also watching a lot more um, like video tutorials and seeing how other people did it. But I already kind of just felt like maybe it was me. So I don't think I really sought after solutions to this issue. But eventually this kind of led me to draw less and less. Um, so this like style change, as I said, took place around like grade 10, but it was probably like the end of high school when I had decided that I didn't know what I was doing. So this is when I started drawing characters a lot less. Um, I actually started focusing on painting a lot more during this time, but I also stopped doing that at one point. After high school had ended, I no longer really had like an art friend group, so I was kind of the only one in my circle of friends who was interested in doing this stuff, which was fine except for that I no longer had like this kind of social accountability. To doing art like I did when I was in art class. I had some very art oriented friends and those friends also kind of kept me accountable for continuing to draw just because it felt like I was in a group, they're encouraging, it's helpful, but then when it was just me it was a lot easier to just kind of give in to the discouragement of feeling like I wasn't doing well enough at drawing to really continue. So pretty slowly, I kind of stopped drawing. Like I'd still pick up my sketchbook every once in a while and draw something. Uh, a lot of the times I felt like I was also really lacking inspiration. So I would just redraw old drawings to kind of make myself feel better. Like to show myself like, oh, there has been a change since then, but because I wasn't practicing regularly, it's not like I actually saw a lot of improvements. And that definitely changed the way that I saw my own abilities because I started feeling like the improvements were getting smaller over time than they had been when I was drawing a lot. Um, also at this time, there was just like a lot more going on. I started working full-time on a gap year between high school and post-secondary and then in post-secondary <laughs> you know there's a lot of work to do so it was pretty easy to let drawing to just become like a background thing until it almost just wasn't really a thing anymore and this is definitely when i'd say my relationship with art became um 
almost non-existent. I remember my first year of university, I really wanted to take an art class, but because I actually wasn't an art major, I couldn't do that. I wasn't allowed to take the class, and I probably could have found some way to join it, but I didn't. And so, as I said, there was nothing kind of like keeping me motivated to continue making art. And all I had was like my sketchbook. So I just started drawing a lot less frequently. At one point I had lost all the paint that I had too. So I didn't even paint anymore. And yeah, so I just didn't see myself as an art person anymore, even though it was a really big thing for me from like early, early childhood until the end of my teenage years. So it was kind of weird to enter my 20s and just feel like, you know, I was the art kid growing up, but I didn't make art anymore. And so that whole period of time up until about last year, which is like a good four or five years of just not really drawing, I didn't really engage with art much. I didn't really see it as part of my identity. Um, but I always did want to kind of come back to it. And I had ideas floating around in my head all the time for like stuff that I'd want to draw. But I hardly ever actually pursued that just because I kind of felt like it wasn't something that I could do anymore. And then last year, in 2023, kind of like the first quarter of the year, I want to say it was March or April, I decided to buy some paint at an art store. And I remember this was like a really big decision because I felt like I didn't know how to use it anymore. And so I kind of felt like if I bought it and I didn't use it properly, I'd be wasting my money or I'd be wasting the paint itself. And so I really had to convince myself to buy it. Luckily, there was like a set of mini acrylic paints and that was on sale. So I was kind of able to justify it that way. And I actually did start painting again and I kind of got really into it again. And then through doing that, I kind of came to realize that I had never actually lost my ability to make art. I just hadn't been using it. And that definitely inspired me to continue again. This is when I actually started using Pinterest a lot because believe it or not, I hadn't really used Pinterest very much at all until the beginning of last year. So I started making boards that were like my inspiration for my art style. Um, and at this time, it wasn't even like character art. I was into drawing kind of more space related things. I still really like that. Um, I think it can be really fun and cool and a good way to use colors. But that eventually led me to seeing a lot more character drawings on Pinterest. And then I started making a board of art I liked that just wasn't related to the kind of paintings that I was doing. And I started seeing more and more of the character drawings. And then I started kind of feeling that like desire to draw characters again. Like I had really missed doing it. And then I started coming across like little mini tutorials on Pinterest. And it started to feel like something that maybe I could achieve again. So I kind of slowly just started practicing drawing characters again in my sketchbook. And I remember feeling like very strange about it because in a way I felt like, oh my gosh, I can do this again. And it doesn't even have to be that complicated, but also I wasn't as good at it as I felt like I should have been with the amount of time that had passed. But now looking back at that again, because I spent 
like I want to say it was like four or five, maybe even six years, where I'd only draw a character every like few months, maybe, maybe. And even then it wasn't like fully done. It was just a sketch and it wasn't like a challenging one. So I think it's fine that I wasn't as good as I wanted to be by this period of time. But at the time in my head, it was something that I could easily overthink. Um, but the good news is that I didn't really give up on that. And then eventually I kind of got to the point where I thought that I could just start learning from the very beginning again, which is why I started this channel. And I thought it was a good way to keep myself accountable for doing that, but also a way to share it because I feel like something that's really valuable in the art space is being able to see a process from the beginning and actually see all the hard parts of it and see um, when things aren't so glamorous because I feel like it's very easy to watch like a professional speed paint and get caught up in how they just seem to know what they're doing and they've been doing it for so long that it's just so easy for them compared to like being a beginner and having a lot of hesitation and having a lot of failures and experiments that you need to do before you can really find success. And so making this channel and getting really involved in that has definitely been a good source of motivation that keeps me trying with this. And I can definitely say that I'm at a place now where I have a lot more peace with messing up and not being as good as other people and just focusing on trying to develop my own skills and my own style. And I do have to admit that this drawing in particular, I was very excited about and pretty proud of. I know it's definitely nowhere near what a lot of other people do, but for me, this is such a big improvement. And so I was very excited to see that. Um, so let's talk about this character then. So this is Clara. She's just supposed to be like this kind of academic, studious character. As I said, I came up with her when I think I was in like the fourth or fifth grade, like a long time ago. I wasn't even into character drawing yet, um, but I just remember kind of being in my class and thinking when we had some kind of like free time about this character that I wanted to come up with because also story writing has also been a thing that I like doing so coming up with characters was great for both art and writing and even as far back as then I liked the idea of just developing my characters so this was one of them this was the very first one that I actually remember coming up with and that I actually remember that I would draw quite often. And she always had like a strawberry blonde hair is kind of what I was going for here. Originally when I was doing this painting, I was thinking it was more orangey and then I actually remembered that it was supposed to be more of like a strawberry blonde. So I kind of hope that comes across in this drawing. But to be honest, she doesn't really have that much of a backstory because as I said, I was so young when I came up with her that all I was really coming up with was like this studious character and I probably had a story that I put her in that I wrote when I was like nine, but I would like to kind of develop some of these characters' stories again and I think hers could definitely be interesting. And this actually leads me to one of my goals this year is that I want to try making completed digital drawings at least once a month because I only did a couple of digital drawings last year, so I didn't really ever become comfortable with it. So I think that if I at least do this once a month, then I can become a little bit more comfortable with it this year and just find um, a better workflow for myself. So I'm aiming to actually screen record all of them and um, upload them when I do them. So if you're interested in watching that, 
uh, you can always subscribe to my channel and you will get to see the next ones. Okay, so I promised a channel update and we are definitely approaching the end of the video, so I need to give that to you now. This is mostly just regarding the relearning art series, if this is something that you've been following along with. Originally, when I started doing this series, I actually thought that I was going to do all the episodes back to back, which was kind of stupid because they take me two weeks to do because I set two weeks as the time period for them. And then I also have to edit them after that, which um, for that much footage, it takes me a bit of time. So they're definitely like the most work heavy videos to do. Not that it's like the hardest thing in the world, but I'm trying to learn at the same time that I'm trying to like, film the videos. And I'm also new to filming videos, so it's definitely a lot of work for me in that way because I'm still figuring things out. And I just kind of realized that putting them back to back like that meant that I had no time to do any other kind of videos that I wanted to do or even just to draw for myself for fun. Um, which was actually really working against me. So I am not going to be doing the back to back anymore. I'm aiming to still have one every few weeks, um, once a month, possibly less than that, just kind of depending. But don't worry, like I'm still doing this series if it's something that you're interested in. I do though want to make other kinds of content and I really want to make more speed paint videos like this. I think it's really fun um, to watch other people's processes. So I'd also like to share mine, especially as a beginner. Um, so I'm actually still aiming on posting more often than I was posting before, just different kinds of videos. But yes, you can still expect to see relearning art videos. I also feel like I can kind of make them better if I give myself the time to do that. Um, so that's the update on the channel. I don't know how necessary it really is considering it's still a pretty small channel. Um, but I know that there's a few people who do watch the series. So for you guys and you guys only, there's the update. So I know we're at the end of this drawing now, but I did just want to talk about like my experience drawing this. As I said, there was a lot of kind of experiments, um, especially you can see here, like I was trying to figure out what color I wanted the lines to be. I'd been watching some speed paint videos from some different artists and I was kind of trying to pick up on a few things that they did. Um, and specifically, there was one I watched kind of recently where I noticed that the artist, um, they kind of like put highlights and shadows in the line art. And I was trying to kind of figure out how I could do that. And I don't think I achieved the same effect that they had, um, but I did like how it looked after I changed the colors. Um, I remember like I saved a file or a copy of this file with the original like dark lines because I was nervous about changing them and then like kept comparing it to this new version and I just found that there is something about kind of like the softer colors of the lines that made it look more appealing to me at least but I don't know about anybody watching so if you have an opinion on that or you think otherwise let me know um, what you think. Also, as a complete beginner with digital art, if you are like experienced in it and you have any feedback on like workflow, especially like the way that you go about doing it, um, the order in which you draw or color things, give me your tips. I totally want to hear them. Like I said, I've been watching some speed paint videos because I think that watching other people's processes probably helps the most with figuring out mine. Um, 
and I just use Photoshop because it's what I have. I use it for other things, so I'm using it for drawing too. But I feel like I'm still so new to this. I have very limited experience with Photoshop. I have some that I learned in high school, but we never really went in depth with how to use it. So there's definitely some tools that I'm not as familiar with. And I wonder how many of them are on here that would be more useful when it comes to drawing. So if you are familiar with Photoshop and you have tips and tricks for drawings and how to make them look better within this software, please let me know. But this is basically all I had to share and the end of the drawing video. So if you liked it, feel free to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Um, but thanks for watching, especially if you made it to the very end, and I will see you next time.